And you're listening to Get Down to Business. I am your host, Shalom Klein. The show is all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. And there's probably nobody that knows more about those subjects than our next guest, David Hochberg. Remember, networking is not a one-time thing. It's not you go to an event, you listen to some content, some information. It's about staying in touch. So I like to practice what I preach, and I want everybody to stay in touch. Get on my website, shalomkline.com. You can download the podcast from this show. And of course, while you're on my website, follow me on Twitter, at Shalom Klein. I'm all over uh, social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, all that sort of good stuff. David Hochberg, you are the man. You are, uh, you're all over the place and sharing information about the real estate market, about the economy in general. Thanks for being on the show today. Well, thanks for inviting me, Shalom. Appreciate it. You bet. So, David, tell us about what you do. Uh, I own a mortgage company called Townstone Financial. We are a residential mortgage broker lender here in the great state of Illinois, licensed in uh, Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and Florida. We also started a student loan consolidation company called SL Advisors to help student loan holders, parents of student loans, uh, helping their kids out and kids that are graduating college with more in student loans than what they're making on an annual salary, help consolidate those student loans that, so they could afford to uh, maybe go out for lunch with their friends instead of just living in their mother's basement eating TV dinners. <laughs> and, uh, David, the, the the weather out here in Chicago has, uh, let me put it bluntly, it, it sucked this year. Yeah. How has that affected your work in real estate? Are people still buying houses? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's really, really funny that, you know, we typically, you hear realtors talk about that the spring market starts after after the Super Bowl sometime beginning of February, but the spring market really happened right around Thanksgiving because what was happening was rates were still low. People were hearing about the dwindling inventory. The people that were in the market in the fall kept seeing inventory go by the wayside and basically disappear. We went from a 24 to 28 month worth of inventory down to a four and a half months worth of inventory, which is great for the market. The market finally has absorbed all the excess inventory. This isn't in all the listening area, but in a majority of the listing area. You know, the further you go out towards the DeKalb's, the Rockford's, uh, the further south you go to the Manhattan's and the uh, Moniz, uh, those type of areas still have a little bit of an excess hangover, but the uh, Plainfields, the Joliet's have have had a nice absorption rate. So what happened was we saw people going out in the 50 below weather, no joke, when it was freezing out in January and making offers on homes. And, and those homes closed last, last month and at the beginning of, of this month, all that inventory is gone now, which is great. So we've seen a nice healthy bounce back in the real estate market just because of pent up demand. And just before the break, we spoke with Chris Everett of Everett College Funding, and she was telling us some of the things you just mentioned. A lot of uh, a lot of families really struggling to pay for college. Where uh, this show is uh, on Mother's Day, and moms certainly know a thing or two about uh, struggling and, and balancing multiple yeah. multiple jobs, uh, juggling multiple careers, trying to pay for life and pay for college. For for folks that are out there that are struggling to make ends meet, is it possible? Is home ownership a reality for them? Well, yeah. If if you set your mind to anything, sure, home ownership could be you know a reality. Owning your own business could become a reality if you want to sit down and and do the dirty work in order to get it done. You know, you can't go out after making you know take your five hundred dollar paycheck and and drink four hundred dollars of it, and on a Friday after you get it, or or go to the boats, or go out and and have a great time over the weekend, and think you're going to be able to save money for a down payment emergency fund to buy a home. You know, they, I mean, that's not realistic. You know, when I bought my first home, I, I went out and got a part-time job on the weekends and bus tables. You know, I, I was waiting tables and was putting away two, three hundred dollars a weekend, which got me to the place where I needed to be to earn the money for the down payment to have the ten percent down to get in. So you, you get in for as little as three and a half percent down. You can, if you um, are a member of our military or a veteran, thank you for your service, and you get in for zero down with the VA loan. So there's a bunch of different programs out there. But you need to have good credit, you need to have a job, and you need to have some type of asset base for an emergency fund. That's what the lenders are looking for. And you've helped a lot of uh, families. I know a lot of them that have been helped by you uh, in identifying the right program for them. Because as I say with everything on the show, there's no one recipe for success. There's no one size fits all. Not everybody is in the same boat. Are there programs out there for people in different situations to sort of rebuild their credit? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of compare it to Baskin Robbins. You know, 31 flavors, a different flavor for every day of the month, because you know, one size doesn't fit all. And if you went through a divorce, if you went through a foreclosure, if you got wiped out in the economic tsunami, if you lost your job, if if you're underemployed and you had to live off your credit cards, if you had a sick kid, right? I mean, if you got into a horrific accident, if you had some type of catastrophic event that you didn't plan for and it took you down a couple of notches. And again, you got to want to. You have to want to heal yourself. You have to want to get better. So if you want to get better, sure, there's programs out there. Um, the, you open up a couple of secured credit cards. When I was at one of the networking functions that you asked me to speak at, that's one of the things I talked about was a secured credit card. And there were a couple of people there that were recent immigrants to this country, and they couldn't get a credit card. And I said, turn around, you know, the banker's in the back there. I guarantee you, if you give them $300 and you have a Social Security card or, or some type of uh, green card, you give him 300 bucks, he'll give you a credit card. And sure enough, I think he opened up 10 or 15 I, I credit so. cards that night. And, uh, you know, those people then, what happens? That information gets reported to the credit bureaus as a good trade line, a good credit um, credit card account, and they start making the payments on that. And guess what? A couple, three months, their pulse is back. And then six months later, they're stronger. And a year after that, they're even stronger because now you have a trade line that you're paying on and that's recording to the, all three major credit bureaus and all the all the bad stuff is in the past it's in, it's in the rearview mirror and you're moving forward it is david we're, we're out of time um how can people uh, get in touch with you to find their solution phone for mortgages 312-896-2111 website for mortgages is townstone.com website for student loan consolidation is lowermyslp.com and uh you can listen to my show saturdays one to three on that fine W-I-N-D, the answer radio station right there. Awesome, David. Thanks for joining us. Take care, Shalom.